Hello? Christian Livingstone here. I've completed a project. It was uh, kind of a project of mine, but uh, mostly it was uh, for a friend. And uh, he has a bike. He wanted to uh, make it an e-bike. And so, uh, you know, I've got some experience and uh, he's been helpful to me, uh, uh, you know, running errands and uh, uh, doing chores and stuff. He lives in the neighborhood. So I decided, okay, we'll work out something where he saves some money and uh, buys him the kit and then uh, we'll install it. Okay, and we're here at the conclusion of our agreement. Logan and I have agreed uh, that he will save money over the period of however long it takes to get that uh, e-bike kit. And here's the text of it. Uh, you just tell me what the gist of it is. So what the gist of it was we were going to save up 300 but we found an even cheaper kit for 250 no, $234 after tax. Okay, and you just brought me $10. Previously, you had had uh, uh, saved up, according to our ledger, our uh, parallel ledger. You have a copy of this, 233 So now we're at one or, or $243. Is that enough? Yes. Okay, and that's enough to buy the kit and a, a, a shifter. And so... Uh, I think we're ready to make the purchase so that Logan can have an e-bike kit on his bike. It's going to take some adaptation, yeah. and uh, you're going to see that too. Yeah. You're going to order the e-bike kit right from your phone? Yes. All right. And I'll help him and uh, do some uh, some welding and design features that uh, you know he'll need to have uh, for his particular bike because. It's a, it's a cheap Walmart uh, aluminum frame front and rear suspension bike. You know, it's a cool enough bike, and uh, but it's going to need some uh, real uh, uh, attention uh, to detail, and uh, we're going to do it. So, you know, this is not going to be just like a, a quick weekend uh, installed, uh, you know, kit on your bike and, you know, be going in the next day and a half. It's a little more in depth. So for some of you guys just looking for the easy bolt on solution, this is not it. Here's our pieces for the battery box. Logan is squaring them up with the plastic on the grinder. Okay, here's Logan's bicycle. And uh, we have a plan to uh, make it an e-bike. And uh, he's got a, a savings uh, thing going with me and uh, you can see we're already kind of moving in that direction though we've uh, fabricated welded designed this rack that goes on to the rear suspension it's going to be a good uh, placement for the battery and the controller make it a little clean go ahead and get in the shot there so you can see Logan this is his bike and uh, that's what we're doing we're uh, getting it ready and uh, we're going to build uh, the battery box we're going to do some more on it today we've already cut some of the diamond plate we've got that uh, aluminum plate uh, as the base for it uh, it's going to go great but uh, I just want to capture some uh, clips now before we get too far along because this will be a pretty uh, a complete uh, start to finish on what it takes to uh, make an e-bike from one of these suspension frames that's a little trickier uh, you know the uh, yeah, the, the whole segment in the back, uh, you know, if you're going to do it on the rack, it's a, a little different. So we'll get, uh, we'll get to uh, doing some more on the battery box today and capture some clips there. But uh, I'll just let you see, uh, you know, how this process goes. And uh, it's AC welding on aluminum, of course. And the uh, welder has uh, a few... Uh, different waveforms, and I tend to use the uh, triangular wave with about 200 hertz, so it, it sounds like uh, a mosquito on uh, steroids, but uh, it helps me keep the heat constrained on this uh, thin aluminum, so uh, that's how I do it, and uh, I'm no expert, so uh, you'll hear, hear it, and you'll think, oh wow, that's weird.
just stop there so you can see it. I'm going to reposition because this, this is very stable and I was really looking for a place to prop uh, for the filler and I wasn't getting it, but uh, I'll show you what uh, the result uh, ends up like. And there it is. There's more of the same. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, there's the machine I was talking about. It's a pretty advanced uh, unit and uh, it's a lot cheaper than the typical uh, North American uh, produced stuff, which I think all their internals are Asian anyway. Okay, and here's uh, Logan's battery box. He's on a home visit for the weekend and he uh, did most of the prep for uh, the pieces. Uh, and, but, you know, while he's away, I'm just welding it up while he's gone and uh, as you can see, this is very thin. This is uh, 18 gauge, which is about uh, 47, 48 thousandths of an inch, and it's challenging. So uh, here I am doing it. This uh, bead turned out well, but you know, I, I got to use the backing with the uh, angle. Some of these other beads are uh, not quite so pretty, so I'll probably just take the flap disc off and you know, make it look more uniform and less uh, Frankenstein like. But uh, yeah, no, it's going okay. Uh, ideally, I would have used a, a you know, a heavier gauge or, or thickness uh, of metal. But this is what I had on hand, so uh, it was nothing out of pocket uh, for this project. This is something beyond. It's uh, there's going to be a lot of custom features, and uh, so that's half of the reason I do this stuff. I look for projects, either my own or in conjunction with somebody else, and this is one of those in conjunction ones. But uh, a lot of welding, TIG welding in particular, there's going to be, uh, I'm going to use uh, materials that I have on hand and uh, uh, try to do it, you know, cheaply so it's not a lot out of pocket expense, but uh, it's, uh, it's actually, it's complete. I'm going to use this little segment for the intro and the outro, uh, so I already know how it went and uh, it went well, I'll just tell you, but uh, you're going to see some cool stuff, how to uh, develop like a torque arm because this uh, particular uh, aluminum frame, the dropouts in the rear, uh, it's almost just like a half moon radius. It's very flimsy, so it's going to get a real stout uh, torque arm with uh, you know, the kind of design features I like to do in, in using uh, stainless steel and collars and things to really lock things on. And Okay, Logan and I are here today, and we're going to start on uh, a portion of this uh, e-bike project. We don't have the kit yet. It's going to be here in a couple of days. But in the meanwhile, uh, we're going to work on that basket. Go ahead, turn the handlebars, Logan, and uh, see, we're going, to, we're going to delete this wire frame basket. Yeah, it's sloppy. It's on the struts with that uh, front suspension, so it just, uh, you know, it's, it's not the best. So... Uh, we're going to delete it, and uh, we've got some material. I had some uh, expanded metal from a, an earlier project, that half-inch weave, and uh, Logan had some uh, with the three-quarter-inch weave, and we're going to use what we got there. And You know, uh, my uh, neighbor owed me a favor, and he brought me over some rebar. So we got rebar, and uh, we're going to match the, uh, the back end there, you, you know, depending on how I... Uh, put this uh, video together you, you saw already the uh, 3 8 rebar for the uh, rack and then the uh, diamond plate for the battery box it's going well so this is what we're doing in anticipation here step step to the other side and uh, but we're gonna do it a little different we're gonna do uh, we're gonna use collars and that's how we're gonna fit the new basket the custom basket uh, to the frame itself it's not just going to be uh, attached at the handlebars and down below at the axle it's going to go directly to the uh, headset uh, portion with the collars you know we had to uh, cut and grind to get it to uh, uh, fit these two split collars uh, under there but yeah it is it's uh, it's going to be a uh, solid mounted right to the uh, frame and so you know, like this, uh, the basket turns uh, with the handlebars. Uh, the, the new basket we're going to do is going to be stationary. It's always going to be pointed in the same direction. So it's going to be a tricky little job, and we're going to have some fun with it. We've got time, so uh, uh, that's what we're doing.
basket uh, off that old uh, wire frame basket. And so what are we going to do with this old basket, Logan? After I get these lights put together, I'm going to smash it. Smash it? Yep. With the hammer? Yep. All right. Don't hurt yourself. All right, die. Okay, Logan and I have been using this, this uh, metal break to uh, bend the rebar. It wasn't the best tool for the job, but we're getting it done, and uh, we're going to use those uh, three ribs, uh, and so far, so good. So this basket uh, had some kind of tedious and time-consuming uh, types of welds, so I just went ahead and uh, did some of it uh, while uh, Logan is away. Uh, generally, I don't do that. I make sure he's here to, you know, assist me with whatever I uh, ask of him uh, while I'm working on a project that uh, is for him. But uh, on this, nah, I did a little in my own time uh, by myself. I get a little more done that way, too. So, you know, it's going well, though. Okay, and here I am uh, piecing this last piece together. Here's the excess on the ground. There's not much, let me tell you. And uh, the way uh, to uh, fill this last void here, everything else is done as far as, uh, you know, enough material. This one little diagonal corner, boom. So uh, that'll be some uh, little petite welding, but uh, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Not gonna have to, uh, you know, do anything out of pocket uh, as far as a, an expense for the material on this. So uh, yeah, Logan's uh, took the day off. He said he had a head cold and he was getting some uh, new glasses fitted for himself. And so you know, I'm just out here tinkering a little bit. Uh, I usually, uh, you know, won't do anything unless he's here, you know, assisting me. And, and uh, but eh. I got a little bored, so I came out here. And here you can see, this is about the most delicate welding uh, yet on this project. Stitching this uh, expanded metal up, and uh, happily my machine uh, has the uh, low uh, amperage arc starts in. So, but what I even do is I'll, uh, I'll just kind of lay the rod right there and, and uh, get the filler, uh, a little ball started on the filler itself, and then it just, uh, uh, you know, welds them together pretty easily that way. But I'll grind, grind this off and you won't even be able to see where it was stitched up. Uh, the kit uh, uh, was a little over $200. Now it's not quite like mine. Mine has the uh, displays and stuff. Mine costs about $309 uh, per, per kit. I'm, I'm running two motors on this rear drive dual. And uh, but his is a little simpler. Doesn't you don't have to mount the uh, displays because his has just got a, a small uh, little uh, battery uh, 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 indicator how much battery on the throttle itself. So he saves some money. It uh, cost him like 238 bucks delivered. Uh, thank you, China. Uh, incredible value. The hub motor laced into the wheel with the controller and the throttle and a few other little dongles and things it's just a brilliant value and uh, uh, what a great function to you know convert a bike into an e-bike for you know that plus I donated uh, an old uh, lithium ion battery I had a 52 volt one uh, 10 years old and he's been rolling around on it for more than a week and you know he gets full full days charge on it so uh, the battery was not uh, you know a dud it's uh, you know, I gave it to him, I think I paid about $700 uh, 10 years ago for it with a charger. Uh, but, uh, you know, he gets it for free because it is old. I'm, I'm not going to use it, I don't think. So, he got it. I donated it. Hey, Logan, what you got here? I got the electric bike kit in the mail today. Wee! Let's see what's in it. I like that trailer. Who did that trailer? We did it last year. We did? Yeah. I know, that... Uh, that uh, expanded metal, that's what we're using. Right behind it is the, the leftover that uh, we did to widen this trailer. And uh, you use this trailer, uh, you know, with a mower. And uh, yeah. is that where you got the money to uh, buy the kit? Yes. All right. 
So you had your little hustle on, on your uh, bike, pulled, pulled the trailer, and uh, you got your e-bike kit. Now, how long did it take uh, for you to earn the money? To, Surprisingly, to... not as long as I thought. No, me neither. A couple months, maybe? It was a two and a half months. Uh, I thought it was going to be the whole summer, basically six months. Okay, so is this the right wheel for your bike? Yes. Okay, before, we were a little concerned about that. Before I brought it over here, I measured it. That's why the box is open. I measured the wheel from here to here it is 20, great 25 so this is a thousand watt uh, kit uh, uh, hub motor and these are the same kind of motors as I got on my trike so yes. you know we we knew what would uh, be coming so anything uh, in the package you want to point out before we move on it did come with controller sure it didn't say anything about controller but it did come with controller does it say the uh, uh, amperage on the controller is that 30 I did not look okay yeah just double check that it did come with the derailleur thing. Oh, the cassette for the... Yeah, nice. But yeah, I'd like to verify that that's a 30 amp controller. It says... Twenty-five? Twenty-six, one amp. It's just for anybody's information. There may be little segments that... Oh yeah, yeah, a battery box, that, that I could do that portion, or the torque arm, yeah, I need some more feedback. Because, you know, we could have used a, an off-the-shelf uh, two-piece uh, adjustable torque arm with a little band clamp to the frame, but to me that's, uh, that's kind of cheapo, it's just not uh, as, as stout, because I have the skills to, to make a, a custom solution happen, so I look for opportunities to do that. I'm not trying to brag, but I don't know, maybe show show off a little bit of my my skill or prowess, but yeah, I do. I'd like to keep busy with, you know, challenging projects and finding solutions to these things. Okay, and so we uh, took uh, the pins out of the connector here because we want to insert uh, the wires through this uh, torque arm. Uh, we're going to put the torque arm on this side, you know, away from the chain on the other side. So we're going to shoehorn this in. These come with a little built-in kind of torque arms, a torque finger really, but this is far better. And his, uh, the dropouts on that bike are just tiny. They're uh, aluminum. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to customize this, and we're kind of uh, hacking uh, an existing one, and uh, uh, we're going to make it look pretty. It looks kind of like Frankenstein now, but uh, uh, geometrically and structurally, it's going to be brilliant. Okay, and as you can see, the rear dropout on this uh, aluminum frame bike is, is very minimal. I mean, it's, it's just... It's just barely hanging in there, so uh, of course we want a torque arm, and we've taken a, a torque arm and hacked it up and uh, made it uh, work for this. And Logan sliding it down the rail here, and uh, you can see how it's going to go. And you know, I like using collars, so you know, collars going to be what fits it up there. Okay, there you go. See, you know, it's a it's not a flat piece because this uh, protrudes out, so we had to kind of skew it by cutting this and welding it a little off center and blah, blah, blah. But it seats down in there real nice now. But we have another issue. He's got, no, no, that can't go on there. We, we have this trailer uh, fitting and uh, it used to go over the axle and there's not enough threads for this to be used in that way anymore. Plus, you know, the connector, we don't want this dangling around. So we're going to add 
a piece of stainless steel for this to uh, ride on. I just wanted to see it laid up here though. But that's about what we'll want. Okay, so Logan brought the bike back. We got the wheel on and uh, now we're going to uh, get it hooked up uh, so he can at least ride it. We won't delve too much into the 12 volt, but we're going to tear that uh, basket off and all the uh, uh, handlebar controls and stuff and uh, get on with it. Okay, everything is now wired up. Uh, the battery box cover is just about to go on and we'll take it on a demo and I'll capture video uh, from my uh, elect electric trike. It's got a camera, so Logan and I will just uh, go out uh, and uh, test it. And so there it is. Torque arm, the cable management, wiring harness, blah, blah, blah. had a, a roommate in a center where he used to uh, be housed and uh, his his room here his housemate got got one and uh, you know an off-the-shelf e-bike and uh, you know because I guess his parents have have more money and uh, they just bought him one and you know he he was in doll cotton with this it, it was a pretty nice one but it was the pedal assist only style I think and uh, he had a problem with it, and he wrangled with the uh, store he bought it from. His mom threatened to sue because something wasn't right, and you know, oh, and so those kind of e-bikes, you know, as good as they might be, you know, they you have to, uh, you know, beg a store to, you know, fix it or warranty it. And uh, these hub motors from China, uh, the whole kit. Uh, I believe they're the better way to go, you know, I think people should uh, uh, search that route first and uh, you're going to save some money for sure, but you're also going to be uh, more keen into fixing them yourself, sourcing parts yourself. Uh, they're very inexpensive, they're very simple in their, their design, and there's no propri proprietary hardware or design into frames and things, you know. This, this other kid, you know, he's stuck with going to that one dealer or seller to have it, uh, uh, you know, a, a motor changed out or something. And the place he bought it wasn't, wasn't the actual dealer or producer or seller. It, uh, you know, he got it through a middleman. And so, you know, you can, uh, you can become pretty savvy with these uh, uh, direct drive Chinese hub motors. Very simple. You know, if you rip a wire out to the phase wires, you know, it's easy to go back in, cut it, and pull it out, and stick it back in, redo it. And so, uh, uh, I think they're, they're just the way to go. I, I really dig them. And here's inside the battery box. You can see how uh, the controller and the 12-volt uh, converter are in there. And, uh, of course, the motor wires come up. Uh, we, we haven't done the 12-volt stuff yet. We test drove it. Uh, Logan uh, ran around like a kid on it. And uh, my uh, video camera on top of the trike wasn't uh, uh, capturing for some reason. Uh, but we, we still had a little issue with this uh, controller uh, cutting out uh, after about a day of riding. Uh, uh, the first day of riding pretty much for Logan and uh, he said it cut out and then he had to uh, unconnect it and reconnect it and then it was fine but we had that big ball of wiring up front in this the opening in the front and uh, it wasn't allowing any airflow and there was some tape over the controller so uh, we've kind of tidied that up and we're gonna uh, punch a, a hole in the back of the uh, battery uh, cover and uh, that'll create the airflow and it should uh, keep uh, things uh, better. So this is what Logan and I came up with, an oval hole at the back end to allow uh, the airflow from this front uh, hole to uh, you know, transition right around the uh, controller and uh, I believe that'll take care of it. It looks like the same uh, kind of opening as the front uh, hole you know, with this edge binder stuff. I'm going to take a quick demo, you know, with the airflow, the hole in the back, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I didn't capture uh, the initial uh, demo, but this is a, 
I don't know, a quick re-demo. And he's not going to top speed or anything, but just giving it uh, a quick pace. Yeah, feels good again. Great. But now we're uh, working out the bugs and uh, uh, the uh, phase wires from the motor are kind of light. They're kind of, uh, you know, the gauge is not very good. So we might just change out the uh, connectors and uh, make them a little heavier gauge power pole and, you know, see if that gets us down the line. Otherwise, uh, you know, the wiring from the motor is kind of a light gauge and you know 10 or more years ago I read uh, you know some of the people enthusiasts at that time were saying yeah you know you uh, right outside the axle you, you convert it to a heavier gauge wire and so it'll be cooler so Logan is uh, you know he suspects something may be uh, a problem there and uh, we'll see We'll, we'll deal with it and uh, we'll get it uh, like uh, Nicholas uh, Messine Taleb uh, and I'm a fan of some of his writings uh, you know his most recent one uh, to, to get things to be anti-fragile so you know on my trike and my dual rear drive uh, units I'm using these kind of motors and stuff and you know I think I've I've arrived at anti-fragile. It, it, it's good, but uh, maybe we can get Logan there too. Okay, on this thousand watt uh, motor kit, the uh, three phase wires are uh, pretty light and uh, the controller wires are heavier. So, you know, first we're going to try just a heavier connection between the two and see if that alleviates it or maybe uh, uh, you know, later we'll, we'll increase the gauge of the uh, motor wires going down to the motor just right outside the axle. And so that'll reduce some of the heat. All right, now with the uh, power pole connectors rated at 45 amps, uh, you know, we're hoping that this will be uh, a solution to what might be a minor problem, blah, blah, blah. Damn, you were whizzing pretty fast. Yeah, you think it's uh, an improvement? Just the connector, huh? Yeah. Those connectors were kind of flimsy. Uh, the gauge and uh, it, it just wasn't very good. So. All right, and here we are, almost complete. Uh, Logan's done uh, the uh, 12 volt wiring. We're getting a, a wiring harness. I like this nylon stuff. It really has a clean professional appearance and uh, you know it matches the black of the bike and so uh, we're having a good old time. Is the uh, 12 volt circuit on right now? I mean you want to demo the lights and the horn and all that? Lights? <coughs> Woo! <laughs> so yeah it's uh, it's looking great. Okay so there it is. Project complete. Battery box, rack, torque arm down below, and the basket. The basket really is the uh, piece de resistance uh, to me. I, I had the most fun doing that, but uh, it all came together real well. And here's the uh, trike I roll around on. It has the same uh, kind of uh, hub motors that are laced into the wheel you get from uh, China for 200 to 300 bucks. Uh, thank you, China. You know, that provides so much value to anybody on the planet. You know, those people are working hard and they're uh, putting out products that uh, uh, the value is unsurpassed and uh, they're coming out of poverty and uh, their quality of life is improving and it's improving, uh, you know, people like me, our, our lives too. We're not having to spend so much money. And I used to use the uh, planetary gear uh, hub motors uh, from BMC and uh, 
for, you know, this was about 10 years ago I started using them, and uh, for about 500 bucks, all you get is the uh, hub motor. You know, I learned how to lace my own wheels, and uh, but these are so much better. You, you buy these uh, for, you know, one-third the price. You get them laced into uh, a rim with heavy-duty uh, spokes. These are 12-gauge spokes, heavy-duty, you know, on the ones I lace with 14-gauge, uh, you know, the spokes break occasionally, and you got to go in and change them and blah, blah, blah. But on these, not so much there. They're very stout, and you know, for the two to three hundred bucks, you get the whole kit, the motor laced into the wheel on a rim, heavy duty spokes. You get a controller, the uh, throttle, and uh, a few other little doodads. Everything basically but the battery, and uh, you know, a good lithium battery at 48 volts or more will, will cost more than the kit, uh, usually. But uh, this is the track I roll around on. As you'll see, uh, uh, you know, some of my uh, signature moves in uh, welding, fabrication, and design are uh, very evident here because this is kind of my flagship. It's a little tattered and dirty right now, but the uh, diamond plate, the uh, expanded metal, and uh, down below you'll, you'll see that uh, I like to use those uh, union nuts. And that's one right there. It's a... Uh, Upside down, it's holding the battery box uh, from below with those uh, union nuts that uh, are they're just easier to grab onto. And so you'll see those on the other project, too, on the uh, aluminum diamond plate battery box I'm building for it or have built for it. But uh, more uh, diamond plate and the extensive use of collars. I've got collars all up and down this thing. And I really like uh, collars as a... Uh, you know, a hardware uh, solution. And so they're all up in there. There's one. That's a 5-volt circuit for the uh, video uh, camera. This is uh, a Bluetooth uh, stereo system. Uh, you know, I listen to music from my phone wirelessly with the Bluetooth. And a cool feature, this is, I bought this $10 used. And, uh, uh, you know, I can answer my phone wirelessly, hands-free, uh, from this while I'm rolling down the street. I, you know, the music uh, uh, stops, and I hit the button and just uh, talk hands-free. So, And uh, on my particular kits, uh, uh, I have the ones with the displays, and they, they give a little more feedback, but uh, the one my little buddy got uh, doesn't have that. It just has the throttle, and uh, it gives bars for the... Uh, battery how much battery he's got so it's a, a little simpler but uh, virtually they're the same I, I believe you could put uh, one of my controllers on his uh, unit and it would accept these displays but his uh, is uh, what they call uh, dual mode and, and that might be a, a, a kind of a, a cool feature for him uh, because it's simplified in that uh, the uh, the uh, hall sensors in the uh, hub motor, if they fail on his in dual mode, it will, uh, uh, the unit will still operate without the hall sensors functioning properly. Now, you know, this one won't with this controller and setup. It's not uh, so-called dual mode, but uh, I've never had a problem with the hall sensors on these. I, I might have had on the uh, ones... Uh, that were planetary gear, the BMC. But uh, anyway, this is just a picture, you know, of uh, what I'm rolling on in, in the video uh, for the project. You know, you you might be curious, you know, what's what's he doing on on you know what's he rolling around on? But uh, so here it is. I'm just giving you the overview. I've got another uh, trike I developed uh, that I electrified, axle driven, chain driven. Uh, but I de-electrified it, and uh, it has some of these same design features. Aluminum, diamond plate, uh, uh, collars, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and uh, yeah, even uh, the expanded metal basket tail section. I might show you a little clip of that, too, just so you kind of know where I'm coming from, my philosophy and attitude towards uh, welding fabrication, because, you know, this uh, project, that's half of what this is about. I just... I just want to uh, 
you know, dig into something to design and, and create solutions uh, uh, for uh, this uh, e-bike build on a normal, uh, fairly normal uh, two-wheeler uh, that, you know, a lot of people are doing these days. It's a, a good solution, uh, you know, especially for me being an anti-statist, a Christian anarchist, not a resident of any state. Uh, I just sold my truck, though. It uh, wasn't registered, uh, but uh, I used to drive it every once in a while to change out my argon bottles, but I did sell it, so, you know, it just kind of... I'm kind of to the place where I, I don't need a, a, a vehicle as a security blanket anymore, I don't think. Uh, not that I'm against, uh, you know, gas burning uh, vehicles. I think they're great. And I don't think CO2 is hurting the planet at all. And uh, But, you know, for other reasons, uh, uh, this mode of transportation for me uh, is... Uh, is it's ideal. It uh, it kind of straddles, uh, you know, something between riding a bike, walking, uh, and uh, driving a motor vehicle. So it's kind of right in between. And uh, I've been rolling around on this for about 10 years already. So, you know, I do all my shopping right in, in the stores on this thing. So, you know, I don't need a truck anymore, I think. So I sold it to somebody and... Uh, uh, I think it went to a good uh, new owner. Okay, so I'll get uh, to some more clips. Because I've never done a two-wheeler myself. I've got another uh, trike that I did uh, make uh, electric in a different fashion than this. Not hub motors. Uh, you know, a regular motor with uh, a chain drive to an axle. But I, I de-electrified that trike. I, I may show you a clip of that just to show you because it does it it has a lot of these same design features and so here's that other trike i did this started out as a, a single speed uh, you know off the shelf trike that uh, i narrowed the tail section so you can get through uh, interior doors and reworked that whole tail section it was a single speed i thought i could shoehorn a uh, five speed uh, internal hub into it but no it wouldn't accept it so i had to go in there and rework that whole uh, tail and uh, i did and uh, now it's a five speed it used to be uh, electrified for a while and uh, but i didn't like how it uh, it was driven from the one wheel it it, it was a powerful motor and it really had uh, some torque steer uh, on takeoff and I, I didn't like that so much but you know I lived with it for a while and I had another seat a little platform seat that I could swap on if I wanted to use this for myself as a backup and I did that once or twice but uh, now I reverted back to it just being a regular pedal trike only uh, there's a 12 volt circuit uh, you know, with the horn and a, a light, I still still like to have a little bit of accessories going on. But uh, as you can see, you know, the diamond plate. I, I did that uh, chain guard and aluminum diamond plate, and there's uh, extensive collars uh, throughout. It's just a thing of mine. And, of course, the uh, basket's all custom with the uh, expanded metal and the... Uh, Diamond plate fenders uh, integrated into the uh, basket, which was nice. And, you know, I tend to use, uh, you know, on all this uh, black uh, paint uh, undercoating. I, I just like the uh, little bit of extra texture. So the fenders got it. Even the light and the horn got it. The handlebars got it. You know, anything you see that's black is uh, undercoating. It's not just black paint so you know that's just kind of my approach and my signature to doing stuff is to uh you know use those materials those textures and the collars for the fitment and uh, I, I just dig it you know and of course the silver i like silver as a color but you know of course that crossbar is all uh that's a solid uh, bar it's not a tube so that's aluminum and uh yeah, my sister was out here just uh, some weeks ago, and we rolled around on this. You know, she I put her on this, and we rolled around. And uh, But she, the last time she was here, or the time before that she was here, uh, this was electrified. And we also rolled around when, when it was electrified, so she got to see what it's like to do that. <laughs>
left turn, 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 turn. Take those earphones out of your ears. Oh, could have fooled me. What is it, Freddie, you say? Get the, get the wax out of your ears or something? <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's that was his kind of sarcastic way to say that you know, you're either not listening or you're stupid, you know. Oh, yeah, all right, let's bust all the way down the street here. This is my old street. No, you, you go. I'm filming you. No, well, your kids, your kids will be able to see it. So you can show off if you want to go fast. see the garden if there's any melons in it I mean there'll probably be cantaloupe or two but I was gonna give her this trike I was hoping uh, on this recent occasion uh, she was gonna uh, bring her truck and I'd really load her up I, I gave her some homemade furniture those indoor outdoor tables I made you can see those on the YouTube channel, but I was going to give her this too, but uh, no, nah, there just wasn't enough room. She had a, a kind of a compact uh, vehicle, so, but I got those tables in there, and so, you know, she's got them now, but uh, I did want to give her this too, because it's just taking up space uh, for me. I might sell it. I don't know what I'll do with it, but uh, I'm thinking about doing another trike now, just a, a front drive. A trike without pedals without anything it's really more of a scooter but I think I want to use the same kind of bike wheel so it'll look like a bike and uh, we'll see how that goes but a real simple design so uh, you know it doesn't cost too much it doesn't take a long time to develop so uh, you know we'll see how that goes but anyway here's the trike and you can see my uh, my approach uh, to a lot of things and my attitude about uh, you know how things can look or might look blah 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 I'm pretty savvy with these uh, uh, direct drive Chinese hub motors very simple you know if you rip a wire out to the phase wires you know it's easy to go back in cut it and pull it out and stick it back in redo it and so uh, uh, I think they're they're just the way to go I, I really dig them so anyway that's the uh, uh, conclusion of the video I'll say this will be the outro and uh, you draw your own conclusions but I think you'll see that uh, uh, the geared hub motors or, or the direct drive hub motors are uh, uh, just an incredible value and I, I, I really dig them and one last point or two you know as a, a benefit going through this process uh, I'll just tell you uh, you know Logan uh, kind of gained uh, some uh, inner strength. I mean, he'd been trying to uh, quit smoking a few times, and, you know, it, it'd go about a, a day and a half. But through this process of the discipline with the money and the savings and being able to see, you know, uh, what you can do by, uh, you know, having some discipline and 
you know, that's one of his motivations, uh, you know, to spend less because, you know, cigarettes, they, they're expensive. They go up in smoke. He doesn't have a lot of money anyway. So, you know, I did some cognitive restructuring with him, some disputation and semantic rehearsals through this process. And bam, right in the middle of this process, he decides to quit smoking again. And it was like nothing, no uh, withdrawals. Uh, and he had, uh, has, uh, gone at least a, a month uh, and a half uh, that I know of. So, you know, he gained uh, something through this process. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, what I've decided, you know, I was talking about how I just, uh, you know, sell this trike or something, but I wanted to do a different kind of a trike, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use this same old trike and put, uh, you know, I've got a couple of extra front hub motors, one direct drive, one uh, uh, planetary gear, uh, uh, and I think I'm going to put the planetary gear uh, uh, motor on this trike, and what I'll do is I'll uh, borrow, you know, the idea that, you know, me building that front basket on Logan's unit, I'll build uh, a front basket up here and I'll uh, integrate a battery box under the first layer of the uh, the bin, the front bin, to kind of give more weight up front. So, you know, the, the tendency on a front drive is to lose track traction, you know, on grass or going up a hill or something. So I'll build, a, you know, kind of a weight uh, and a basket into the front of this. And that'll save me some time. I put a, a lot of work into this over the years and it, gone back and forth with what to do with it, how to do with it. And uh, I did have a platform seat that I could slap on there, but I threw it away. You know, it was about a hundred bucks in uh, out of pocket expense to do that. So, you know, I'm going to have to spend that again, but uh, you know, I know exactly how to do it and it works well. It's proven. So uh, I'll do a platform seat. I'll uh, uh, maybe I'll even lace uh, with some of those heavy Chinese spokes, the uh, 12 gauge spokes, just because I like them so well. But I'll build a, another, uh, probably out of the uh, same uh, rebar, 3 8 rebar. I've got some of that. I'll have to buy some uh, expanded metal, but I will be uh, uh, sneaky and I'll build a, uh, a battery box integrated, you know, kind of stealthy under the, uh, the first layer of the uh, the front basket. So that's what, uh, you know, I kind of got out of this. I got, okay, uh, yeah, why not? Why should I uh, try to reinvent the wheel? I got something right here that's almost ready to go. So I'm going to do that. So uh, that's a, a little bit, a uh, bit of a, an added benefit for me. And also Logan, you know, he's not huffing and puffing and smoking and wasting all that money. And it's like nothing. He, He's got no withdrawals, no cravings. He doesn't look edgy or anything. So uh, good for him. Okay, thanks. <laughs>